Algae in a pond can be a real pain and can drive people nuts trying to get rid of it. Before trying to reduce or eliminate algae, you should remember that it's an important part of an aquatic ecosystem and its food chain. One of the most common and successful methods of algae control is the use of copper, either via algicides or copper ionisers. While they are effective, it's important to know the impacts that using certain products will have on the pond. G'day, my name is Kev. The aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, you might like to subscribe and check out my website, ozponds.com. So first off, how does copper kill algae? I'm no scientist, but here's my basic take on it. The copper binds to the algae and damages its cell walls. That causes them to leak and the algae dies. It's really important if you do use an algicide that contains copper that you follow the directions. Too much copper can be toxic to fish, birds, bacteria and even the plants by preventing photosynthesis. And even smaller amounts, like those released via an ionizer, can impact on shrimp, snails and the tiny zooplanktons that are incredibly beneficial to ponds. Algae is actually beneficial as it can produce oxygen and it's an important food source for zooplankton, which are an important food source for fish and other aquatic animals. I have tried a copper-based algicide in the past and I pretty much immediately regretted it. The first thing I noticed was I no longer had snails. I'm a big believer in ecosystem ponds where we try and find a balance. It can take a long time for a pond to find that balance. There are some things that I find can help. Firstly, you want to have great filtration. I've got many videos on filters and how you can make them yourself. So if your pond doesn't have filtration, that's the first rabbit hole to go down. Next is encouraging the growth of diatomes is a great natural way to reduce the amount of food available for more problematic types of algae. Diatomes are a type of algae or photoplankton that form the basis of the aquatic food chain. They can convert nitrogen, phosphorus and carbon dioxide into oxygen rich compounds that help promote a healthy pond environment. I'm in Australia and I use a product called Diatomics, but for those outside of Australia, New Algae is a suitable alternative. I'll link both down in the description. Both products add silica to the water to promote the growth of diatomes. Because I'm a big fan on the ecosystem approach, I'm happy to try and keep or encourage animals or invertebrates that will help move the algae up the food chain. I also find that in any of my ponds that I keep goldfish, I have no problems with string algae as they will eat it. I have three different ponds with goldfish, all have no string algae or very little. I found that most of the native fish that I keep here in southeastern Australia are predominantly carnivores and won't help me out much with algae. So in those ponds, I try and keep shrimp, snails, and even freshwater mussels. Another thing you can do is to physically remove as much as you can. I know this can be tedious, but it can help reduce the amount of algae that reproduces. And by removing it before it completes its life cycle, you effectively remove the nutrients it used to grow in the first place. Plants are a common go-to. One reason is a lot of plants can help block sunlight and algae love sunlight. So for that to have any real impact, you need to cover much of the water surface with plants. I'm not a big fan of this approach because I like open water and I want to see the fish. Plants will also consume nutrients that the algae could potentially use to fuel its growth. I like to hedge my bets and use plants in my filters and on the pond's margins. You could also try pond dye. This blocks the sunlight to prevent the algae growing. But to be effective, you need to add quite a lot to make the water quite dark. And that doesn't always look as natural as I found out the hard way. Another popular method is barley straw or barley straw extract. 
these, if my understanding is correct, release hydrogen peroxide, which will kill the algae. Hydrogen peroxide is a common form of algae treatment in aquariums. Both barley straw and hydrogen peroxide I haven't personally tried. So if that's something you want to explore, <laughs> I'm not your guy. And the last thing is just patience. Eventually the pond will find its balance. Once this happens, you'll have very little algae and a self-sustaining ecosystem that you can just kick back and enjoy. I hope this video has been helpful and has made you think twice about using copper in your pond ecosystem. Thanks for watching. See ya.